2021 as a student developer he is currently doing a global github external at thread now the objective of the event is to gain only one big and bright feather in every and free developers camp so i'll hand over the uh, mic to mr sahil sir and he will explain to you about the gsoft and uh, uh, before that uh, during the course of the webinar i'll ask you guys to remain muted meanwhile you can post any query queries you have on the chat and at the end we will have a q and a session where you may unmute yourself to ask the question thank you uh, sahil sir over to you yeah thanks for having me guys uh, it's really nice you arranged all of this and all of this part of us on the side so thanks to the max society uh let's uh, let's get straight to it uh, let me know when my screen is visible to you all right so let's get started straight into it um about me mostly most of the things uh, it, uh have been shared so the recent development was that i'm also mentoring at python software foundation this year uh under the dffml organization so uh you are welcome to uh, look at the projects and share the link in the group after after the session and you can connect with me on linkedin uh, this uh, pdf of this presentation would be available after uh, after the session for for you to take a look at the links and also if you are connecting on linkedin i would say that uh, you should always add some message that you uh, want to connect and from where you found me because uh, what will happen is uh, i get a lot of requests and it is difficult to filter through them and uh, that's pretty much about me so so for uh, so as i uh, saw there were a lot of bursty students so let's let's first discuss about what is open source software so about open source software there are uh, two main points here and that are any piece of software that is publicly accessible and that is free to use so most of us have used uh, open source software in our life like firefox vlc chromium uh, android is technically open source and linux and vmware or uh, virtual box etc these are very commonly used open source software so most of the open source software are free to use some are not obviously uh, there are licensing and other legal issues with them but mostly you will see this trend in open source software that they are free and publicly accessible means you can see the code you can change the code and distribute the code without any cost uh, so some more resources i have linked in this video so anyone who is willing to check out more on that can uh, use this link so let's start with what what uh, gsoc is not about so i see a lot of people a lot of places where people are marketing gsoc in a very Wrong, wrong, wrong way. Like it is not a competition. It is not about stipend. It is not about duties. Being a G software is not a tag. So these are all the misconceptions I would say that students have around G SOC. These are all byproducts. It is not a competition, and the, these three things are by. And uh, the actual goal of the program is to build a community of developers, teach us collaboration as developers. and introduce students to the open source ecosystem so this year it has been open to uh, uh everyone not only students so this year things have changed a bit but uh, more or less this has been the agenda this has been the goal of gsoc for uh, many years and this is the pa basic part which you should get right if you are into it because of it is a uh, uh, good way of getting stipend or a tag so that is a uh, wrong concept about this uh, and i would say you should not uh, think about these sort in that way so the first and foremost questions a lot of people ask especially beginners ask is what are the prerequisites what should i know where should i start so i would say that uh, there is nothing uh, there is no very standard there is no standard answer for that it depends on what you are looking for what you uh, want to have what you want to uh, build in tsoc so i would say that familiarity with any language basic programming uh, fundamentals should be clear and ability to search read and understand new things so th this is the highly underrated skill of any software developer that he is able to google 
googling things and understanding new things is the way to go so these are the few requisites you don't really need to have a very good dev background or something uh, as a mentor uh, something out of your tech stack which is which you would uh, need many more hours to learn for example you are a java programmer then you should look for software that is using already using java as their main language uh, rather than going into another language and trying to waste uh, i mean invest time in learning that and uh, that would just lead to you know a situation where you will not have very uh, much time left for your project so long term goals uh, so if you are planning to go in a certain uh, domain for example if you are trying to go into machine learning so then you should align your goals uh, align your project with that you should try to choose a machine learning idea if you are trying to go into web dev you should try to use uh, try to take a back end uh, related thing like mysql participates in gsc and and what makes sense to you like you should not take a overly complicated project that you cannot understand because uh, mentors for students there is a guideline to to devote some amount of time but for mentors it is like uh, in the mentor guide it is written as 0 to 10 hours so the mentor the mentor your mentor may or may not be available at that time he or she may not give you that much time to build your basics uh, so this is something you have to do on your own and and new ideas so a lot of people uh, asked like how to propose new ideas as a beginner or as a new part new member of the, the community it is very difficult to bring come up with new ideas because uh, because the thing is we as maintainers already have some vision for the project and we will only accept those ideas which align with our vision and to align with our vision you need to be uh, involved so after one year now i can think of uh, really good new ideas for my organization but when you join an organization and when you start out it is very difficult to know uh, to come up with a new idea students do come up with new ideas it is not like that nobody comes up with new ideas but if you are just starting out i would say try to stick with the ideas that your organization has proposed so let's get through the go through the timeline once to properly understand uh to properly understand how everything works so our goal uh, is here here is to get selected so our part starts when organizations are announced before that everything is left to mentors and organization admin so i am skipping that part because that doesn't relate to student so each year participating organizations are announced and they they put up their ideas like what we want from students what we have uh, as an expectations so the organizations are announced and then uh, from the time when organizations are announced and till the time the applications open that is generally a month or two in between that and that is the right time when you go ahead and contact the uh, organization and uh, try to understand their objectives try to understand what they are expecting so for example right now at this moment of time uh, the organizations have been announced but uh, there hasn't been any uh, uh, i guess the students cannot log in at this time let's see uh, so contributor is open for april and uh, so it is substantial amount of time when you can go ahead and interact with the interact with the organization so for example my organization is under python uh, software foundation and we have project ideas right so for project ideas uh, every organization will have their idea space so here is an idea space for and like uh, we have mentioned that this uh, this uh, the this session is going to be there and everything so every organization writes up a small write up about them like who they are what are they doing what are they trying to achieve and then they list their ideas and most of the organization will have a getting started section so first and foremost you should try to get started with the organization and try to get involved how to uh, contact them how to uh, uh, how to contact them how to be involved everything would be written like the heritage written contacting the team so you can come on getter a lot of a lot of organizations will use getter or discord and that is uh, 
so then applications open so uh, then you have to choose an idea that, uh, just as we discussed uh, uh, in the previous slide that uh, you have to choose an idea uh, and when you choose an idea you write a proposal and you try to be as early as possible uh, if you are already with the organization in this uh, period since when the organizations are, are announced and when the applications open you will have plenty of time to think about your proposal and then you can start drafting your proposal uh, right away and be first so what happens is when when we review uh, when we review proposals what happens is uh, we just cannot review hundreds of proposals we are going to reject proposals which come at the end and we are not going to look into them we would not not be able to give them feedback for final evaluation we only have one week and we can get out kind of get out with around 100 to 150 organized 100 to 150 applications would be there and only two or three meters away so it is very difficult for us to go through each and every one so so it is better you start early so that we can give you an idea of where you are going wrong or how you can change your proposal so feedback is given but feedback is given only on uh, the early applicants because they are right it is kind of a first come first serve thing and and you have to be early so uh, that's the point there and then the application period ends in this period then you again you don't have any thing in your control you can keep contributing in this time also so that you know what happens is uh, so my mentor who was there he told me that i was continuously uh, trying to contribute to the organization so so they knew that this person is there in the organize uh, uh, this year for gsoc he is here and be very be very clear with your uh, objective that you are here for gsoc because we generally also get other contributors who are not who are not for gsoc and we would not be able to differentiate so if you are there for gsoc tell that i am here for gsoc and then we will uh, know yeah that that this person is already working and we will if he submits the proposal then we will obviously look at his proposal first and then projects are announced so this the community bonding period starts after project announcement so th there is a big misconception that students have to start contributing in the community bonding period it is not like that uh, the actual contribution period should be either before the org are announced i will tell how and uh, how you can Uh, go ahead with contributing before the orgs are announced, or after the orgs are announced and before the applications open, or between these two points also you can keep continuing to contribute. But this period of community bonding is actually dedicated to refinement process. So the refinement process uh, is the process of uh, refining your ideas. So you propose something in your proposal. We give as much feedback as we can, or sometimes we. think that the proposal is good as it is some students write very good proposals so like i didn't get any feedback from the mentor uh, though i was late uh, but i was involved so due to some reasons i was not able to uh, submit early and uh, but i was i was very much involved from uh, past 3 months or so 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 the mentor knew that yeah this this person was there and my but i i couldn't get any any evaluation last uh, any feedback on my Uh, proposal last year so uh over over there yes so so this community bonding period your mentor will discuss with you that what you have to uh, change in your project what what you have to uh, change in your thought in your plan or sometimes students write very unrealistic deadlines so we have to correct them and th then your coding period starts after community bonding so you start working on your project and midway in your project so so how we count projects is on number of hours we don't count projects by months or weeks we counted by number of hours devoted and hours are not counted as in physically it is called like that you should be able to deliver this much before first evaluation and you have you must de devote the x number of hours before before the first evaluation so first evaluation is when i will uh, as a mentor i will review your work and you will review that whether i was able to resolve your doubts am i helpful or not so rarely but we do fail people in first evaluation because they have not even remotely met uh, uh the 
timeline that they proposed in the proposal, whatever they wrote in the proposal, if we are not meeting that timeline, we have to fail the students at that point. So in the mentor guide, it is clearly written for mentors that fail early instead of trying to uh, do, uh, wait for the second evaluation. So it is very uh, important for students to pass their first evaluation. And when you get your first uh, evaluation uh, is cleared, your uh, stipend is half, 50, 45 or 50 percent of the stipend is released by Google. Then you continue coding until the second evaluation. This year, uh, the evaluation scheme may change. Uh, it has not been very clear because of, of the dual timeline this year. So we have two types of projects this year, a short project and a long project. So, uh, so they have like uh, number of hours requirement like 175 hours or 350 hours. So uh, such a requirement is there for uh, the projects and but it would be more or less like this second evaluation you will get your final evaluation from your mentor and whether you have passed the program or failed the program. So don't do that. And uh, finally the results are announced and rest of the stipend is released. So, uh, so that is the whole timeline. Uh, so this was one of the most asked question. Uh, uh, so this is a page with them. So they have given choose a sub org and there is a template available. 2019 application template is available here. So so for for new new students, I will just go ahead and how to get to us get to such a page. I will just demonstrate that once. So that, for example, there is some of code that we will get on and so you just go ahead and search yours. So, so they have listed their site here and ideas list here and contributor guidance, everything is there. So the page we just opened was taken from this side. So as a sub -org, org admin, we generally uh, would not directly interact with Google. You will interact with the uh, umbrella organization and then our umbrella organization will go ahead and uh, interact with Google. So, so this is there. So they have a template. For example, Python Software Foundation has the template here. and it is written in Markdown, but you have to write it in PDF format. So always use Google Docs uh, because that's what they will ask you for if you are starting before the uh, before the application starts and application period starts. And you, if you have, if you have write, started writing your, uh, uh, your your proposal, then you should you know use Google Docs that because uh, that's what they will recommend. They will ask you for and always you know you have to share it in a commenter mode so for example when you share anything uh, in google docs you go ahead like this and there is an option to uh, select as a commenter so so always make sure that you have take this because otherwise we will not be able to give you any feedback on your on your document so yeah so so this is this is the organization based template some organizations do not have this so in that take in that case you should take inspiration from last year's ex ex accepted proposals so um, yes With la also uh, it is always a good idea to take a look at last year's accepted proposals mostly organizations will put their proposals uh, openly some organizations do not because uh, of certain reasons I don't know but most of the organizations will will put their uh, proposals on uh, publicly uh, on the on the archive page. And so, as, as I discussed earlier, that you should apply early and improve with feedback. Uh, be realistic and clear. So, what what I uh, another anti pattern I see introduced is that they try to write very unrealistic goals to to start sound impressive to, to uh, sound impressive or to look very, uh, you know, students have this kind of problem with estimating how much they will be able to do. So always look at the timeline, how much hours this year Google is providing you and what you will be able to achieve. 
this is a very common skill that you will need in any working in any big company you will need to provide that a timeline for working so this is a good good place to start so be very realistic with your proposal don't don't overstate don't try to uh, put very very ambitious projects because in gsoc what happens is you start with a very good good uh, note and you start with a very good pace but uh, in the end you will you will find that a lot of things are pending and a lot of things are uh, not done yet so rarely students go to stretch goals rarely students uh, reach to uh, a part point where they have completed their project so so you should be uh, pretty clear with realistic with your goals don't try to overstate and clarity clarity is that you should not try to uh, abstract away a lot of information so what students uh, do is that they will draw a very high level thing and then try to uh, state it in a way that is not very clear to, to us so if it is something is not clear we are going to just reject it using diagrams is a very good thing so there are uml diagrams for for first year students that is uh, unified modeling language that 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 is i guess that is the platform for uml so unified modeling language is nothing it is just a set of uh, set of shapes and stuff that is used to standardize uh, the design process so you can go to this uh, tool it is free i will just, uh, i have it linked it here so make your make your diagrams uh, uml diagrams and you should uh, try to use some hld di diagrams and some lld diagrams uh, for example let us need to in something that is not proprietary yes let us see so this is a deployment diagram you will never need this kind of diagram but uh, so so here you have a special shapes for so there are use case diagrams there are activity diagrams class class diagrams sequence diagrams component diagrams deployment diagrams a lot of things are there so if you just go through any lld short course you, you will know that what what are all these things and i will add a link here for for any further reading uh, so that's that's pretty much it about a good proposal so enhancing your proposal is uh, something that also a lot of people have asked in the google forms for registration so enhancing uh, i i'm not very clear with what do they mean by enhancing but i would say that improvement yes improvement can only be done with uh, either feedback or more research uh, yes do we do we have a question there uh, yes sir we have some questions so uh, all right so so actually i'm not done yet so i was just Yeah. Uh, okay. We first continue with the PPT, and then at the last we will have a Q and A session. We always look up, look out for diagrams if there are good diagrams there or not. Uh, diagrams are actually the way to shorten a lot of text because if you write the same thing in words, you will like take a lot lot more space and a lot more work for the mentor so so he will probably prefer the proposals with good diagrams so that is yes. so are we are we in the end between now yes so so i will like to share a grading rubric so this is the rubric that my organization uses the organization which i have been a mentor at from a year about now uh, but this is uh, pretty much what every organization does uh, so they may or may not uh, state it publicly i have linked this so you can go through this rubric rubric basically is uh, for people who speak hindi it is map done so, so uh, the the areas on which you will be judged so that is a rubric uh, a formal way of defining that so so there is a rubric we uh, kind of go with 
uh, what are the goals in proposal so you should always for for uh, a dffm and proposal you always ask for goals so your goal should align with the project idea completeness of proposal so that as i said that you should be very clear if your proposal is incomplete or it is like kind of lacking something it uh, it it would be not good for you you should you shouldn't do that so completeness of proposal time commitment engagement with community again it is a very big thing uh, engagement with community so we have uh, rated this from 0 to 3 and all of the things so you can go ahead and take a look at this page it has a very good explanation of everything mentor board self directed so self directed is when we see students are kind of uh, understanding things on their own or not so some students will come for example i will uh, show you the getter chat getter chat of the community so what happens is here i am uh, i am kind of writing the same thing for each and every student here kind of i have a lot of patience as a mentor everyone does not have but uh, so so try to see if someone something has already been answered try to do your homework don't go and just ask that please guide me it is it is a very uh, very wide thing uh, it is not very focused if you have very specific doubts please feel free to ask it is it is very much welcome but like like this fourth person has again asked the same thing can someone help me getting started and, and this is just what i have stated above this is again i have stated above and it is just quoted from above i am not even writing it again and again so that is the thing don't do that it just actually you know adds work for us uh, if you can search something on the docs go ahead most of the docs have good google uh, uh, good search support so like for example you need to search about something like web ui if it is there it will show up if it is not there it is there like there we have something related to the web ui it is so you got and you can go ahead and see what you need probably you will find something there if you don't find something there of some if something is not clear go ahead and ask plus but the point is please do your homework first so uh, so we were going through the right yes so self debugging so a lot of times you will write code and it will not work if i am spending most of my time with you and debugging i will not prefer to do that you should have good debugging skills you know the the biggest uh, you know there is a good uh, use of print statement <laughs> uh, though i would recommend you use a debugger but if you are starting out using print statement is and a lot of people just use print statement there is no there is no problem using that and contributions we do care about contributions if you have prior contribution or not so this score is obviously normalized because if someone is working for uh, a very long time in the project we don't want him to have an excessive advantage so the normal the score is normalized to 1 to 6 so 6 will be the whoever whoever did the most most of the scores are normalized for 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 uh, an equality between uh, students who have just came in with the community or and who have been engaged with from a long time but still somewhere or the other the people who have been engaged from a long time would be given slight slight preference over the new ones but generally people who have been with the organization from a long time would not would not actually participate in the soc so uh, so contributions you should have at least so i would say a good number to stick with is 3 prs 3 prs 3 meaningful prs not three uh, documentation correction and kind of prs those those don't help to do that uh, once again i'm saying it to not press on it more than that uh, so this is like i will i have to find my proposal i probably had four or at least i had three so some people have 13 some people have 10 it is not if you have one big pr that also works but having three small pull request is good pull request if you don't know about pull request when you will watch the get and get up video you will know what is a pull request so so i had i had five and three of them were merged and one of them was blocked due to some another issue and 
and what one was you know waiting for review so so the part was done from my from my side uh this was uh my project proposal and and i will share this with with the organizers so that so that everyone can have it on the so i had some some diagrams i had proper links i i kind of explained what are the uh, what is the extent of the project from how the classes are structured and everything and the weekly timeline how i will do this stretch goals so as i said rarely you get to stretch goals because time is not last year time was uh, not we didn't have much time all the projects were small projects so and other commitments so this is this is the python software foundations template and your organization's template may uh, look different uh, but the gist of it is like you should have good diagrams and prior prior contribution is very important this is the thing and right now is the time to do uh, time time to raise pr from the projects you know and okay so so some insider information i i have already talked about it so the insider information here is that participation in community events is very important so we have we have talked about the first two points here already and uh, so start early start early so starting early is a good idea if you are preparing for gsa 2023 there there is a good good probability that your organizations uh uh which have been coming from from a long time would, would be there next year also so this is a very good small website if you if you haven't seen it uh it it uh, actually has all these filters that how many organizations came in 2016 2017 2018 so they have data from 2016 probably it is rolling for 6 years so so if if this year 22 organizations are added 2016 will be there so these organizations those organizations which are coming from past 6 years they are they have a very high probability of coming this year so you can just safely start today and so for example if you don't get into the soc in, in the worst case that can happen that you don't get into the soc so you can start contributing to any of these orgs and slowly and steadily you will you will gain an understanding of the project you will be able to uh, be a part of the community and you will be able to make a much better proposal next year so participating if you want to participate start participating as soon as you can and this is uh, this is uh, another anti pattern i see among students that they think that uh, they will uh, just come in and kind of rush their way through that that is not possible especially for very big projects it is very difficult some and there are all kinds of projects as an insider i will say uh, that i have probably covered it yes so i will talk about that later uh, so so this is a very good website you can kind of filter on categories you can filter on technologies you can filter on topics and already start working before the organization is even announced because you know that yeah i would say that any organization that is coming from past 3 years will be there the next year so starting early is is a very good thing to do uh, but even if you haven't started early and you you start after the organization announced that is perfectly fine Stay with the organization. Staying with the organization is very important. So, so once the GSOC period is over, it is not like your journey has ended. It was just a start. You have became a part of a community now, and you should like try to be in it and try to further proceed. So one day that uh, in some time you will become a maintainer. You, your your rank will be higher, and you will learn a lot of things because the people maintaining these projects are generally employees in. uh in fortune 500 companies so 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 they are very good engineers he will learn a lot of things he will learn a lot of engineering practices how things are done how to think about code so there are a lot of things uh, that cannot be taught or even if they are taught they are so abstract that students cannot grasp them software engineering is such a subject a lot of people are taught software engineering in college if if you are from iit or cs you will be having a subject uh if if you haven't studied it yet you will be having a subject on 
on software engineering system design but either they are just so out of touch in in many university they are within university they are just out of out of the uh, like they are they are rusty they don't have the latest information they don't have the latest practices and trends and everything so to get that you you, you need to stay with the organization uh, i personally have been sticking with dffml from one year consistently trying to attend as much weekly things weekly meetings as possible and trying to stay with the development part learning a lot of things in the process and one of the biggest information that nobody knows uh, from uh, about gsoc is as an organization we are specifically told that you have to keep some beginner friendly projects and that is very important what happens is our goal is not to pick the best and make them even better our goal is to introduce new students to open source bring them bring new people into into the system so we are not kind of discriminating here we are trying to bring in beginners into the system so for example in in uh, in case of tffml in case of tffml i have written two projects recently just for beginners and uh, those are so these these two projects we have specifically written with a beginner in mind so they are as easy as it gets obviously no none of the soft, software engineering project or the open source project is the very simple pro product because any product will have a lot of moving parts but still from a beginner point so beginner's point of view it is uh, very important and they have misspelled beginner i guess <laughs> Anyways, thanks. So, just a moment. I will, I will, I will correct it later on. So, beginners are welcome. We have beginner projects. Every organization is supposed to keep a beginner project. Though this is not a, a documented rule, this is an unwritten rule that we have to kind of accommodate new new programmers and help them get in. so and the worst part is that you you will not be accepted that that is if if you are if things go wrong if you are not selected the worst thing is that that you will get a mail all right you are not not accepted not accepted in gsoc but but that is not the end of the world you have obviously come a long way from where you started and next year you will be even even a much 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 better than what what you were so yes and the other thing uh, that is very problematic in students is that the how, how they learn so this is another thing i want to share with students is that how formal education works is everything is taught to you the syllabus is given to you and then you give an exam you write an exam you learn everything and you give an exam but in production uh, in in materials and productions we we have this concept of just in time production so so for example if there is a company uh, which is making cars it will not make thousands of cars and keep them in stock it is it is not how that works when you if you have bought any car or something you will know that you have to place an order then your then your car will come it uh, after a few months so so the thing is we make those cars just in time we don't keep a lot of materials in our uh, factories and then uh, kind of stock the cars somewhere it is very costly it is very inefficient so there is a there is a way of learning that is similar to this just in time so just in time what you do is you try to do something and you are not able to do it you try to learn the parts you don't understand and then you kind of uh, uh, understand yeah that this thing can be done this way and then you go ahead and do it uh, uh, and uh, the cycle goes on so so this part and this part again kind of is connected so that's how you should do so Uh, for example for example i need to go with any of the any of the things i want to start with if i come so and i'm uh, kind of taking the example of if i'm looking in a cam so I'm sorry for the uh, issues so for example i want to go in this one now there is an error all right 
so i don't know what a trace back is for example i don't know what a trace back is so i will just go ahead so i said all right so so trace back they have they have written the python documentation has written up everything about trace back and and you should learn to read the documentation documentation official documentation is mostly very uh, to very accurate and to the point just make sure that you are you are following the right version of the software for example we use 3.7 so though there will be not uh, there there will be no drastic difference but but you should try to stick to the right version and and then go ahead and read this and that would that would do for you so you you have a good understanding of how the trace back thing works now i know then i will go ahead and and understand this then i then i know i don't know what this error is then i'll go google it and then come back it is kind of a backtracking approach uh, where you go explore something come back and try to do what you were doing so that is how you should learn especially in open source it works like that nobody can teach you everything there is no no given syllabus there is no no specific set of things that that you need to go uh, learn or do you should stick with those uh, prerequisites that i have listed and then you should follow this approach for example i was recently working with with one of the projects in lua so probably i cannot show this on stream because because it, because it is a great project so so i have never worked with lua so i i somewhere saw that there was a meta table i didn't know what a meta table was. so i just went i like, like to put one in a sphere of meta tables so meta tables in lua and just read about it there will be always be great great resources about around that and that is how you should learn so so now i guess this we can take take the questions uh, okay sir so uh, before we answer the questions on the chat box we will answer the questions which were on the form so sir, first question is sir how to make an uh, enhance proposals yes i i guess we have gone through those questions already uh, in in the ppt i i made sure that we covered those if if they are still there maybe maybe we can uh, go ahead okay sir then we will move to the chat uh said so the first question is java or c++ which is one is better for ai ml all right so so java has no role uh, in, in ai ml c++ uh, c++ i would say c++ is not used at a very high level c++ is used for designing the core of a library so for example most of the ml libraries would be structured like they will have a core of c++ or c and on top of that they have a python binding so so how it works for example we have got it on my screen is my screen is not checked just just on Right. So, for example, we have NumPy. NumPy is a very, very famous library uh, in in the ML community. So, if we go into NumPy, so you will see that there is like sixty two percent Python and thirty five percent C. So, what is happening is. we have all the core algorithms and the actual heavy lifting is done in c or c++ and then for for user friendly uh, user friendly api uh, a user friendly user interface for for uh, data science people we will have python as a as a facing language so hello yes uh, ayush kumar what was that you Um, Ayush, when you have to ask the question, raise your hand first. We will ask you to unmute yourself then. So I will say, uh, if you are starting out, start with Python instead of C plus plus because C plus plus is kind of go, trying to go into the brass tacks of the system, and it would be very difficult for you to understand that at when you are starting out. But if you are already uh, in a in a good uh, 
place where you know a lot of things then you should obviously go for c++ and try to try to handle the core of the libraries like even if if you see tensorflow is written that like that pytorch is written like that every other library is written like that so i would say go with python and then c++ if you are into that java java is not there javascript has started adopting uh, ml stuff but still uh, there is a lot of thing things that they need to do and and uh, it is a it is a long route for for javascript for for now they do have tensorflow js but but it is not not as mature as the python uh, so so does that does that answer your question if if kids these days is here mm -hmm. okay so we will move to the next question before that, Devanshi, do you have any question? Uh, if yes, you can unmute yourself and ask it now. Uh, okay, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Uh, yes, I saw that you presented us with the proposal of yours, which you might have sent to an organization. In that, mm -hmm. you mentioned that you wanted to work on a particular serial numbered uh, issue. Along with that, you proposed that you want to bring in two models into that. Uh, I I don't remember the name, but you proposed those two model names. So like I am a person who is a complete beginner who has no information on what technicalities we should remember and like you you proposed that how should we create these proposals along with the grasp and uh, I still don't get what sort of technicalities uh, were there like can you please tell like how can we cover up those and understand those technicalities so so the thing is that uh, about the the models and stuff uh, some things come with experience you if you have worked with other, a lot of tools you know that this tool might fit in here but if you don't know it uh, for example how to do this how to do that kind of queries in in a specific language will will land you to a point where will will land you to a point where you can find find good good resources uh, for example let's let's go through the proposal again uh, we can kind of discuss that Let's go there. So for every every uh, Python software foundation person, you will find such a such a work product. So work product is something that you submit as a summary of your work at the end of CSOC. So proposal. Uh, this is my proposal. And so are you are you talking about this stretch goals? Uh, actually you may unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm talking about this. All right. So so uh, what I saw was uh, so I will tell you my approach how how I came up with the stretch goals. Stretch goals first of first and foremost thing was I I took inspiration from the person who came before me. So I will go to his uh, his section Arora. I'm very lucky to work here. So, uh, I don't Yes, so so we we are required to use guest in that. Uh, yes, so here is here is your Shlamba's project. He has proposed here. So you will see this is this is kind of our kind of our uh, uh, template that we have to follow. Uh, where are the stretch goals? So, so he has written that I will take suggestions from mentors for implementing more algorithms. So that's what I have done here. I have kind of written it in a different way. Obviously, you don't have to copy someone's work. So this was uh, an issue that I I was just browsing through the issue tracker. So on every repository there, there is an issue tracker under issues. So so you can just see I I actually never got to got to this part this part, but 
I saw, saw that whether this this pro issue was open, and it was marked as uh, you know data flow, which was which was kind of related to my project. So something related to my project, but an extension of my project is what is uh, what what we look for in a stretch goal. So our stretch goal was to uh, implement this cache based data flow. And these models actually, I knew this because I worked with these models in in production at one of my internships. So these are NLP models, and the library didn't have any NLP model. NLP, you understand, natural language processing models. Yes. So so NLP models, we didn't have any NLP models. So I I went ahead and uh, recommended these because they were very much used. So it is not necessary that you know this. We we generally Look for uh, something that that is that makes sense. It it needs not to be very accurate. It is not a part of uh, evaluation. So stretch goals are something you know a, a added bonus, brownie points kind of thing. But it is not something that you need to need to worry about. Oh, okay. So also I would like to uh, ask one more question. It might sound naive. but basically yesterday i i commented on an issue and i got a response they held me by telling me about an issue in which basically i need to uh, it's basically some sort of file community uh, sort of program where uh, in a drop down menu i have to put an icon in front of one of the option mm -hmm. so they told me that from where i can browse the complete library and, and can find the relevant icon for mm -hmm. that particular work and like my windows is windows 7 and it is much more compatible with windows 10 or uh, later like windows 11 yes. so for working on such uh, pro problems or issues is it a necessary prerequisite to work on some latest windows or it, or should i just completely move on to some other sort of issues so look it, it it is not a very black and white situation here because some projects are designed to work on linux or uh, linux based machines so in that case if you are developing a software that targets such a platform then you should use that machine for example if you are working on a project that targets mac os you should mac use mac os if you don't have a mac then that's a completely different story and and a lot of people don't have macs so that is that is completely normal so Uh, and windows windows uh, a lot very few projects which are open source will target windows as a primary platform uh, so as a primary platform most of the open source uh, software will use linux uh, i i am natively running linux that for, for the same reason other than other than uh, privacy concerns and stuff and windows 7 i would say windows 7 is a very good operating system but it is out of date so running an out of date operating system is not something anyone would recommend you if you if you if your machine is old and you are not in a situation to upgrade that is perfectly fine just switch to linux any linux distro is uh, easy to use uh, that is easy to use ubuntu manjaro there are there are a lot of linux distributions that you can use and uh, such distributions are very user friendly uh, you just need to know uh, in in which area you are i'm i'm just a beginner fresher all right you're a fresher So, so you must not have studied about Unix yet. So, so, so for those who have studied about Unix, can easily switch to Linux. So, Linux is a good platform to work as a developer. Mac OS is a good platform. Windows, I have not personally used Windows for a long time now, and and I cannot say how good Windows 10 has become now for for developers. But I have heard that they have good Windows subsystem for Linux. So you can run Linux under Windows, uh, and that is a good option as well. Try to search for WSL. And switch to Windows 10 at least because Windows 7 most of the things have have removed support for Windows 7. Does that answer your question? Uh, okay, so you recommended WSL. WSL under Windows 10. Try to switch to Windows 10 if you if you have always used Windows. Uh, you can uh, try using Ubuntu or something if your machine is not shared and some at your at your place because it is not a very trivial uh, migration process. There is a some learning curve to understand how how Linux systems work. We don't have EXEs. We have a lot of things. We don't have a C drive. We have a single partition, and there are a lot of things about Linux that you need to know. Uh, and and I would just generally recommend everyone to uh, get a hang of Linux because you know every other service, every other AWS service, every other thing will use Linux. 
and and in long term it will anyways it will help you understand the logic and stuff okay thank you sir you welcome uh, okay sir the next question uh, from lakshay and uh, also are you single is that do you know uh, that if we know c++ basics and some bsa should i propose a request in gsoc or not you should definitely uh, you not uh, limit yourself to to a tech stack uh, though it is very difficult for a beginner to think that they will be able to go to another language if you know one language you just have to uh, understand how the same thing is done in a, another language it is not something that you should limit yourself with uh, languages generally are very much the same they have just different way of writing things some languages might not have certain features for example i have recently started working in lua lua has nothing to do with ops oops and uh, it is but they have work arounds to implement op object oriented programming in their in their system so there will be similar things in another language so language is not something you if you know dsa if you have a good logical mind you will be simply able to uh, read through code bases try using an ide that kind of links you to different types of uh, you know let me see if, if i can show you something good i try to say Yes, let's go with DFML because DFML is open source and I will not get into legal trouble. Uh, if I are you here. Let's just go to it. Can you just do this? Alright, so here we are. For example, I am just browsing a very good code base here. It is a very big code base, but there is something specific I want to look for. Uh, maybe this thing, and I come to something here. Yes, for example, if if I want to see what base data flow facilitator object is, context, or something, something. so uh, an id will get you a long way in understanding what it is and where it is coming from so so in vs code if you if you kind of press control with that it will take you to the to the root cause uh, to 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 the root source of that and then then you can go ahead and even dig deeper and dig deeper and deeper so so this way you can kind of navigate through the code very easily uh, in any language it will work most of the languages are supported and most of the ids uh, Like like VS Code has a good support for a very good uh, number of languages, and you will be able to navigate through the source code. Uh, try to understand that everything is built uh, in parts and modules. So uh, this is you sh you should have something like a language neutrality in your head, where where you don't need to know the language to read the code. It comes with time, obviously, and test. It is not something that you will be able to do on the very first day. but it is a good good idea to uh, you know start using an id if you are not already using and not limit yourself with any language just uh, does that answer your question um, all right yes he says yes okay um that's it from the questions from the chat box if else have any questions they may unmute themselves and ask me now Okay, Dwayne, show me and meet yourself. Uh, okay, uh, there was one more question. Basically, so did I start by seeing the issues and sending the comments uh, to several organizations at once, or should I one by one by getting response and by getting to see my work uh, from one organization? And if it doesn't fee, uh, fits well, then I should move forward. Is it that way, or like I should go on with multiple organizations at once? look uh, multiple organizations at once would be very difficult for you to get a hang of anything uh, so i would not say that you should go with a lot of organizations you should spend some time choosing things that work for you for example if you know python you should try to pick a python related project and and then that way you will be much more familiar with the code base how things work 
because every language has its different uh, set of uh, different set of tools and technologies that they use for example python people use uh, Sphinx for talk 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 building and, and there are a lot of things there uh, i will just uh, go ahead and try to give you an idea on how to look at uh, something like for example this is a repository there is an issue and this is this repository doesn't have many issues so let's go so we have a lot of issues here obviously you will be filtering with a good first good first issue one so that so that you are not overwhelmed we we specifically pick such kind of issues for for introducing people to the code base so so it is a it could first issues are generally very small issues and you will be able to get a hang of it i will say going for up to three organizations is okay because anyways you will not be able to not be able to look into many projects very short amount of time if you have a lot of time obviously you can go for more but don't go for more than three because that's the limit on how many people can submit you can submit up to three proposals so working on three proposals would be all right spend some time choosing your organization try to find good issues and uh, which are simple and which are not typo related again typo ones for example i will show you that this this uh, has been we, we haven't uh, you know like uh, approved its ci cd pipeline because because it, it doesn't really add something it is just kind of a spam the command line code is for linux but i mean that the project is for linux so so, so there is no point writing this kind of thing. But anyways, so, so what I'm trying to say is, uh, we should try to uh, not go with a lot of projects, just go for two and three, and try to understand their code base. Every code base has an entry point for, for example, for DFFML, you, you can find multiple entry points for DFFML. DFFML's root is its entry point, where you, where you find a lot of sub-entry points. And try to build a mind map of of the code base. Uh, obviously, it is not possible with many projects that you build a complete mind map. But when you are when you are working on an issue, uh, if you if you have played Age of Empire, you must have seen that there is the, the the map is black for some of the part, and so and you explore that slowly and slowly. So so that that's how it works for code as well. You you have to explore the part of code slowly and slowly. Uh, you cannot overwhelm yourself. So so don't go with a lot of work. Does that answer your question? Um, yes, sure. Thank you. Uh, we'll wait for one minute for seeing if anyone else has any question. Yes, please, please feel. Uh, if to, not, if, if you are not feeling like speaking up, you can you can put it in chat if anyone has any questions. We are kind of. Uh, So we don't have many questions here. Kind of, we, we covered the most common questions in the PPT itself. Um, yes, sir. Uh, I guess uh, no one has any other questions. Yes. In that case, uh, thank you for the uh, events and the webinar, sir. Yes. Thanks, everyone, for joining. We will end the session now. Thank you, sir. All right. Thanks for having me, guys.